God bless you. Be seated. Thank you. Were we going to roll something? Yeah. Now, this is something that the Holy Ghost told me that I, I, was, I need to be emphatic and say this in this message. We do not advocate violence on any level on anyone. We don't advocate going in to target and knocking over displays. That's wrong. We don't advocate getting into confrontation with store managers and workers. That's wrong. We don't advocate blocking the front doors and getting into fist fights with people that run abortion clinics. Why? Because this is not a natural battle. People that do that do it because they don't have any faith. They think, I can fight you with your own weapon. I got news for you. If the church continues to use the world's weapons, we're going to lose because they're better at it. They're more skilled at it. But if you will lay down your intellect and your unbelief and your righteous anger that says, I can do this and pick up, hallelujah, the sword of the Lord and pick up faith and the breastplate of righteousness. God said, I'll reverse things. Amen. 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 So I, I want to read a little statement here. Um, if you know me and you've listened to my preaching for any amount of time, you know that we do not, I do not, condone violence to anything as a solution. And this last week, I don't know how many of you, how many saw the, the posts that um, we are advocating that you would put on chest bombs and to blow up things. Um, and it created quite a firestorm. So I want to say we're peaceful. We're loving, and that we believe in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ as our greatest weapon. And Paul said this, for the weapons of our warfare are not natural weapons, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So it's a shame that I even have to address this, but evil people don't play by the rules. This is why we never do interviews with secular uh, entities it's because last week was uh, a perfect example. They take things out of context and then they run a 30-second bit that sounds like that you're endorsing. Uh, and perhaps I need to be a little more careful on how I present some of our principles. But um, I want to say this when I mentioned that we need to have the passion to lay down our lives for Christ. Amen. We are declaring that from the standpoint that we must be willing for evil people to kill us, to lay down our lives for the gospel as the early church did. And Jesus said this. He said, it's going to happen. He said, they are going to kill you thinking that they did God a favor. And so I do not believe that we're at that point in America. Unfortunately, the church is at that point in other nations. And Christianity is being martyred at genocide rates, almost at a genocide pace in other nations. And so we are willing to lay down our lives for Christ, but as a sacrifice that the gospel might be pushed forward. And so we want to make that clear. Um, I'm excited about it, the Elijah Co. Uh, conference that's coming up. It's going to be a powerful time. And uh, I want to encourage that if you are not quite sure what the call of God is on your life, when you get in this type of setting where the presence of the Lord is, God begins to bring clarity. 
And so this is going to be a time where I believe that God will give you some direction in your life, and he will give you some clarity to the call of God in your life. It's also a time where God can really give you the strength to step out by faith into what the Lord has called you to do. And so come to this. It's, it's not, I think one of the biggest mistakes that we have done is that we only pour into preachers. And we need to be pouring into the body of Christ because the Bible says that the gospel was spread throughout the, the church world at that time within two years, but the disciples stayed in Jerusalem, and it was the body of Christ that was dispersed that released the gospel of the Lord. So I want to talk to you about something today, and um, I, I wasn't aware of what was being uh, said about us uh, Monday morning. It was, I don't know, a day later, my wife said, you need to read this, and so uh, I'm not going to tell you the website or the people because I'm not going to give them any credence. Uh, but we, uh, we also need to get used to this. Because whenever we are declaring the gospel of the Lord with clarity and we're not bowing down, then there's going to be an attack. But no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every word, every word that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. And I went to prayer, I think it was Monday, and God spoke something to me very odd. He said, do not let the enemy draw you out of the position that I have placed you. And God began to begin then to release uh, some things that I want to talk to you about today. And so we're going to read two verses. We're going to read out of the book of Genesis uh, chapter, I wondered if you would remember. Amen. This is so good. Listen, God honors this. I want to say happy Father's Day. I want to also say happy anniversary to Rick and Debbie Massey that have been gone. Thank you for coming home. And um, happy anniversary. 52 years, right? My, my, my. All right, we're going to uh, read one verse out of Genesis chapter 2 and verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And then we're going to go over to Ephesians, and we're going to read out of chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. And let's start with verse 5. Even when we were dead in sins, this is kind of what Nicholas was talking about, had quickened us together with Christ, for by grace you are saved, and this is our key verse, and he hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, Father, I thank you for the word of the Lord. And Holy Ghost, now you go ahead and take over. You say what you want to say, do what you want to do, heal while we're preaching. And Lord, release, hallelujah, throughout the world and to the nations that are now listening to the word of God being released. Let there be life from the vine begin to flow as virtue into the broken, into the needy, and the bruised, and the captive, and the poor. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. The very first thing that God did when he made the very first human being was he positioned him. He didn't make him. He said, go where you want, live where you want. For the Bible said he made him and then he placed him. God did not create the garden first and then Adam, but he created Adam, and then the Bible said he created a garden because he wanted Adam to be in a specific place. God likes to know where you are. That's what he asked Adam. The first question he asked him, he said, where are you? God likes to know where we are, and if we stay in the position that God puts us, that question does not have to be presented to us. 
And God put him there because it was in that place that God was declaring that there would be great blessing on Adam. The moment that Adam was displaced from where God originally intended for him to be, the blessing of God lifted off his life. How many of you can say there have been times where you have been out of position? You have been outside of the will of God. The reason that the Israelites were not blessed in the wilderness was because they were out of position. They were not supposed to be in the wilderness. They were supposed to be in Canaan land. And when you are out of position, God can sustain you, but he will not bless you. And it wasn't until Israel got back into position, the Bible said the manna ceased and the milk and the honey began to flow because they were in the will of God. So we go to Ephesians chapter 2. And now with the new spirit man that has been created by God Almighty. The Bible declares very explicitly that God, when he made us, hallelujah, in the spirit, he positioned us. He put us in a particular place. He made us to sit with him in heavenly places. This is why Ephesians 3 says this. God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Where? In heavenly places. Whenever the blessing of God is not on your life, it is because you have allowed the enemy to draw you out of position. And right now the devil is trying trying to intimidate the church and righteous men and preachers to step out of the position that God has put us in. And the moment we step out of our position, we step out of our protection. We cannot compromise. We cannot backtrack. We cannot apologize. We cannot say, okay, we're sorry. No, we stand on the word of the Lord. We never apologize for the word of God. Devil, you will not pull us out. You will not challenge us. You will not intimidate us. We're not going up. We're not giving in. We're not giving up our land. We are standing for the things of the Lord. I wish I'd have brought it because it's, it's a fairly lengthy list, but I did a conference years ago with a gentleman. He was a White House correspondent, and he wrote a book, and he chronicled what happened in the United States every time we pressured Israel to give up land. And every time we did something that tried to pressure Israel into some kind of peace agreement that required them to give up their land, something bad happened. Whether it was a financial problem or a hurricane such as Andrew or something, it happens. it's happened every single instance. There's like 16 or, or 20 different instances in which something happened to the United States because we pressured. Israel to give up their land. God gave us land, and he told him, Naboth said this. He said, I cannot sell my inheritance. We need to hold on. Listen, God planted us for this hour for this reason, and when you are in the will of God, hell cannot touch you. There is a boldness that God wants to put on you today that when you stand your ground, the enemy cannot draw you you out the Bible is very plain it says this about Christ when Jesus started his ministry soon as he was anointed and the heavens opened the Bible said that he went into the wilderness and he has an encounter with the devil. And the first thing the devil does is try to get Jesus to move out of position. And he said, if you are the son of God, 
cast yourself down. Jump off. Move. See, whenever you are positioned by God, the devil cannot move you himself. He has to do something that will get you to step out of where God has placed you. And Jesus begins to come against him with the word of the Lord. The only way that we will ever have victory in these next few years in the earth is by standing on the word of God. Hallelujah. I got a letter recently somewhere because I said the Bible can't be amended. And, and we'd been better off if the Constitution hadn't been amended. And, and, and again, quit watching me. This is for people who believe in the Lord. Hallelujah. With Christ, whenever the enemy tries to draw, he, he tries to draw Jesus out. Why? Because he sees in the spirit that Jesus is fixing to do something that no man has ever done. He is literally going to shake the kingdoms of darkness. So he tries to get Jesus to move out of position. Now, at the end of Jesus' ministry, when he's getting ready to do his greatest accomplishment ever, we would all say that the greatest accomplishment of Christ was when he gave his life on the cross. Because when he was on the cross, his blood began to drip to the ground, and that blood became the atonement for all mankind that had ever lived and that would ever live. The devil sees Jesus, and Mark and Luke, I believe in Matthew, all talk about it. Then the first thing that people were saying, they would stand and look at him and say, if you are the Son of God, come down off of the cross. They were trying to get him off the cross. Step out of your place and God the Father has put you. And Jesus said, no, hallelujah, for this cause was I manifested that I might destroy the works of the devil. Listen, when God positions you, there are going to be seasons where it looks difficult. Hold your ground. Don't you let the devil run you out of your inheritance. If you know this is where God puts you, you tell the devil, my feet are anchored on the rock of ages, and though they name me, slay me, yet will I trust the Lord. If he could have got Jesus out of position, Jesus would have never stepped back over into the dimension that he was in. And because he held his place, the scripture says that Jesus Christ has been made to do what? Sit with on the right hand of the Father. And right now he is in position with the Father getting ready to stand up and come back in the clouds of glory. Wherever God places you, it is blessed. When God places you somewhere, it's blessed. Now, there are seasons where God will take you through difficulties, but you have to stay in the will of God. This is why the Bible talks so much being filled with the knowledge of the will of God. You have to know what the will of God is. When, when we started our church, and, you know, I'm preaching to, to five and six people, and it's so difficult to preach to an empty building. And, you know, three of them are kids, and two of them don't have a clue what's going on. And, I, and I'm looking at that, and yet I know that God had told me to start a church. And so you stand up, and you preach by faith. 
You are declaring, what are you doing? You are staying in the position of God. We are where we are today because we chose to stay in the position of God. I had many people over the years come to me and say, you need to change the position of how you minister. You need to be more seeker friendly. you got to stop being so Pentecostal. You need to tone down the way that you preach. We need to do different things to get people to want to come in. But I knew all we want is the presence of the Lord. And so we held our ground for the presence of the Lord. What do we have today? What is this church known for today? Today. It is known for when you walk in the building, you go, my God, what is that? That is the Spirit of the Lord. That is the presence of God. Why? Because we held our position. I got news for the liberals. We ain't changing. Go ahead and go back to thinking where Michael told David, you have shamed yourself in the front of your handmaidens how you dance. He said, you ain't seen anything yet. Hallelujah. He said, watch me. I'm getting ready to loose the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you, hallelujah, that we are just getting warmed up in the spirit of the Lord. We are blood-bought, Holy Ghost-filled. We believe in the apostolic move of the spirit of God, and you will do not draw us out. If you don't make up in your mind that nothing's going to move you, something will. Go back to the Old Testament. And think on this story. Judah and Israel are divided. Uh, Saul is, is king over Israel. David is king over Judah. And Joab is David's leader over his army. And Abner is the captain over the army of Israel. Ishbioth, Ishbioth, who was Saul's son, had been made king, and he accused Abner of sleeping with one of the concubines. And it made Abner really mad. He said, I gave my life for you. He said, God help me, and more so if I don't take this kingdom and I give it to David. And so... David and Abner made a alliance. In that setting, I forget where I read it, but it, somewhere it talks about that David told Abner that you're going to be head of the armies. Joab was an evil man. <clears throat> he was David's cousin. And so... In the process of the battle, I think it was Ashiel, Joab's brother, goes after Abner, and he doesn't have a weapon, and Abner keeps telling him, turn around and grab a weapon, grab a sword, don't make me kill you, and you're not armed. <clears throat> and he kept coming after him, and Abner turned around, and he killed him. It made Joab so angry <clears throat> that in his heart he had already made the decision I am going to kill Abner Abner goes to Hebron which is the city of refuge it's one of I think seven that Israel had and if he got inside the gate then it meant that anybody outside the gate couldn't touch him. And he had safety until the high priest died. Joab comes and he calls to Abner in the gate and he entices Abner to step out the gate. 
Joab, he knew this. He could not go into the place that God had positioned Abner because he knew I don't have any authority there. The enemy can never step into your realm because he knows I don't have any authority when they are positioned in Christ. And so Joab knew the only way that I can get him is I have to get him to step out of his dominion over into mine because that side of the gate I have no authority. This side of the gate I have the God-given right. And when he got Abner to step out of Hebron just outside the gate, he took a knife and he stuck it under his fifth rib and, and Abner died there on the ground. If we will hold our position, see, this is what we've been dealing with is they stepped over into our realm, but they don't have any authority there. Don't ever let the enemy draw you out. There are two things that the enemy will use to get you to move from your position that God's put you in. One will be that he will try to make where you are seem so troublesome and so painful that you don't want to be there anymore. The other one is, is that he will make the other side of the fence look so much better than where you are, that you will step out of where God has put you because you think it's better over here. You have to hold your ground. I, you know, I hear people say, find a church of your choosing. That's not scriptural. You don't get to pick the church you want to go to. God picks the church that you have to go to. And, you know, we have people come and go, and it's, and it's always more difficult for my wife when we've had somebody that's been a part of us that leave. And I always tell her, listen, if they can leave, then they never were supposed to be there. Now, there are some people that we send them out because God is repositioning them. But there are others, hallelujah, that they're here today, they're gone tomorrow. So be it. Bye-bye. Jake said we got the bye-bye ministry. Listen, you, this is a war that we are in. And you might as well understand that there are seasons where it looks dark. There are seasons where you think, God, is this really where you place me? But the Lord's saying, I see something that you don't see. And I also know that if you step out of my protection, then the enemy will come in like a flood and you will have no defense against that. But when you are inside Hebron, and Hebron means place of fellowship, when you're inside of the garden, when you're inside Hebron, The enemy cannot touch you. Because even in the Garden of Eden, the devil was where God had put Adam. But he had no authority. He couldn't touch him. All the devil could do is just walk around and go, man, this is nice. This is the best place I've been since I got kicked out of heaven. And he's looking at Adam and he's thinking, wow, he's where I used to be. So what's his goal? It was to get Adam to step out. He drew Adam out. And the moment that he drew him out of position, he got him. You have to be so careful that you don't let anything. Paul said this, we're troubled on every side. And he was speaking, I think it's in Acts chapter 20, and and the disciples, um, they were talking to him, and he said, listen, he said, I don't know what's going to happen to me in Jerusalem, but he said, I know this, that there are troubles and afflictions that are waiting for me. But he said, 
I am not moved by what I see. He said, because I need to finish my course. Whenever you step out of where God has called you because it looks like there's some other place that's easier to survive, you just stop your course. You just stop your purpose. You just stop what God raised you up for. Listen, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Psalms 1, now, those who delight themselves in the law of the Lord shall be what? Planted by the rivers of water. God is big on putting you in a particular position and putting you there for a reason. We have been positioned for this hour in the earth because there is a mandate of God on Regeneration Nashville to release the gospel of Jesus Christ. So hallelujah, let it be known around the world. The only way you'll shut us up is to take us out. But as long as we are breathing hallelujah there is a holy ghost out of it coming up out of our belly that releases the anointing of the holy ghost you know it's the biggest mistake the church is making today right now is they don't realize they're at war they don't think they're at war you're at war if you are a Christian. You're at war with abortion. You're at war with the transsexual movement. You're at war with all of these different issues that are going on. Why? Because hell wants to win. And the only thing that God... How many saw my Wednesday podcasts on relationships? The only way that we will ever be blessed... As if we are under covering. And so, I heard one man say, we're so worried about trying to take our little city while there's other ministers around the world that are trying to take the nations. So we're after the nations. Why? Because it's, in our, inher it's our inheritance. Nashville is just a part. Hallelujah. I got a feeling that God is going to use us to relight Pentecostal fires that used to burn in Nashville proper. I pray about things I can't tell you behind the pulpit, but I'm believing for some amazing things. I'm telling you that in the next three or four years, you're going to be shocked of what God is going to release to this house. Amen. We Listen, God pays our bills. We just spent $900,000 on steel. Thank God we had the money. Now I need somebody to send me $850,000 to pay for the electrical. And then I need another $900,000 for uh, another issue. You. And listen, those of you that got the money, write the check. Hallelujah. Let's get on past this thing. But we're not, hallelujah, going to go into debt. Why? Because the blessing of the Lord is upon us. We are not a wilderness church. We are an anointed Canaan church. That means we take the wealth of the wicked and we give it back to the righteous. When you stay in your position, God will let you begin to reach outside of where he's placed you. Because the scripture says that when Jacob placed his hands on Joseph, he began to prophesy and he said, I see your branch or your vine going over the wall fruitful. Because they would put, when they planted vineyards, they'd put a wall around them to keep the predators out. But God said there's going to be such an anointing through Jacob's prophecy on Joseph that he said his vine cannot be contained where I placed him. It's going to go over the wall. 
into the realm, hallelujah, where the enemy lives. But God was saying because its structure and its foundation is from inside the blessing of the Lord, when it goes over the wall, the enemy will not be able to destroy it. I believe with all of my heart that our vine is creeping up the wall. We've already filled up the enclosure. Now the fruitful bough is beginning to go up and over the wall. We're going to crawl over into some other places that that have been dead and not produced fruit and the power of God is going to begin to release it by the spirit of the Lord. Do not let the enemy draw you out. There are seasons where it looks like that God just lets everything be peaceful. And then there are times, and, and, I, and, I've, and I've wondered about this. I thought, Lord, we're just, we're really moving along here, doing great at Regeneration Nashville and our church. We've got our building and all of that. Don't ever be foolish enough to think that the enemy is not going to come after you. As long as you stay inside. There are a lot of preachers that wish that had never gave an interview. Because they stepped outside of Hebron. And then there was no protection. Stay inside. Everything about God is that he positions people. I look back now and, uh, you know, I've been in Nashville. Let's see, August, we've been married 36 years. And I've, I've been in Nashville somewhere around 38 years. And I was raised <clears throat> in the Northwest. I pastored in the Northwest. And then God uses just a bizarre set of circumstances that happened in my life. And I find myself in a place that I never, ever had any intention of going to. And the very first place that I ever stopped in Nashville was Trinity Lane. And it was right off of Trinity Lane where we started our first church. And I look back and I think, God, I didn't realize it, but you were planting me in a vineyard that I didn't know about. And it took all of those years to get to this point. But I can also tell you this. Planting ain't forever. He who goeth forth bearing precious seed weeping shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And I'm just going to prophesy this to the church corporately that the days of planting are over in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. The days of weeping are over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say what you want. It doesn't matter. They said it. They twisted Jesus' words. They twisted, twisted Paul's words. They twist, uh, twisted Peter's words. It's happened down through time. But can I tell you this? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, for the Lord knoweth them that are his. Uh, let everything uh, that names the name of the Lord depart from iniquity. So how are we going to condemn what the enemy says? I'm not getting in a war of words. We're not going to do an interview. We're not going to say, why'd you do this? We're not going to file a libel suit. We're just going to fill up 709, hallelujah, over there on Rivergate Parkway. We're going to fill it up with the glory of God. Yeah. 
And I, I want to make a point. Instead of writing about what we're, what you say we are doing that we're not, how about write about our ministry extension called the bridge that we're feeding approximately 7,000 minority children and homeless and elderly people every week without the government's help and ask your readers to send us on our last bill we got from the food bank it was $78,000 and we're still wondering how to pay it all so how about writing about all of that that is seven four that's about 28,000 people a month children and most of them minorities that the bridge ministry is footing the bill because we care about children and the homeless and the elderly that are food challenged so let's hear something about that send in your money hallelujah for the bridge ministry step up if it's all about humanity and it's all about children then stand up and put your money where your mouth is uh, and help us further the cause of Christ by feeding the needy. There are seasons where when the enemy comes against you to get you to move, you just have to do this. I ain't going. Give me your best shot. I ain't moving. I'm planted. God planted me. I'm by rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Listen, it's always going to be worse when you go to greener pastures that God doesn't own. That's why David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord and dwell in the tents of the wicked. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Listen, I have, a, I have a nice house. I have a nice truck. I have a 2015 sports car that I've had for years. And I'm grateful for those things. I've prayed for years for those things. But before I ever had them, when we lived in an apartment, I found a place in God that I learned to be happy whether I had those things or not. Find a place in the Lord that the enemy cannot buy your position by offering you temporary blessings. Because at the end of the day, and some of you understand this, there is nothing like entering into the holy presence of God and realize I am standing in the holiest of holies Hallelujah. I, I can't, I know I sound like a nut, but there's times that I can't see him, but me and Jesus hold hands when we pray. I'll just take my hand, I'll put it out like this. And I know he's not there physically. I know I can't see him, but I can feel him so close. I just reach out and take my father's hand and tell him, I, I love you. I'm so grateful that I get to go home and be in heaven and be in the presence of the Lord. It's overwhelming to know that you can stand in the presence of the eternal creator and that he has time for us. So who are we to question God that when we find ourselves in positions that are painful and difficult and the enemy is offering us something and <clears throat> you know how many times I've seen people get in a really good church and as soon as they get on fire for God and their family's doing good they get a job transfer offer that's double the salary and they take it and as soon as they move out of the presence of God everything begins to go to hell in a handbasket because the enemy drew them out a position stay where you are we listen the enemy's 
trying to draw the church in the United States out of position that if you want to exist and you want us to like you and you want to be blessed, then you got to come over to our side. Listen, stay in Hebron. Hallelujah. Stay where God's called you. It doesn't matter if you have to take a lesser job. It doesn't matter if you have to sell your house and move into an apartment. But as for me and my house, we choose to be in the presence of the Lord. At the end of the day, if you can walk into the presence of God and say, Hello, Father, and he says, My son, my daughter, you are wealthy and you are blessed by the power of the Lord. The only place that you will ever be blessed in God is when you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. You can get on the internet and just ask for the list of well-known entertainers and actors who committed suicide before they were 40. And the list is long of people who were wealthy and famous, beautiful spouses, had everything, but the enemy drew them out. I think of people today that should be alive, but the enemy drew them out of position. I feel this strong in the spirit I, I can see it in the Holy Ghost. There, the enemy is standing at the gate of some of you. And he's trying to make you change your position in God. Don't do it. Hold your ground. Hold your ground. Hallelujah. Hold your ground. <clears throat> do not let the enemy trick you into moving out of where God has placed you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I pray the spirit of revelation and the eyes of the understanding of this men and women, God, would be open right now. And that, God, this body of believers would be able to see right now in the spirit what the enemy Lord looks like. The Arabobo Sunday. Just give me a moment. I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just kind of following the, the leading of the Spirit. This is, this is not about backsliding or sin in your life. I'm telling you that there are so many of you that have such a call of God on your life, and the enemy is trying to get you to shift. Don't do it. Hallelujah. Stay where God has called you. Stay where God has planted you. When God wants to move you, he'll transplant you. You hold your ground in the Holy Ghost. There's a real depth of the Lord right now in this building, and I know it's transferring through the online Some people he moves because they're in pain. Some people he moves because they're ambitious. Some people he moves because covetousness is pulling on them. But whatever means he uses, <clears throat> it doesn't end well. You stay in the presence of the Lord. With your eyes closed for a moment, I'm going to give an altar call. I might have shared this with you before, but just for a moment, look at me. I want to, I want to tell you something. <clears throat> when I was at the lowest point in my life ever, and I it finally realized some of the things that occurred in my life, and I remember walking down Dickerson Road, which is not very far from here, 
in the twilight of the evening, and I was just weeping. I had no, I didn't know what to do. My life was over. I had no church. I had no ministry. And I remember standing in front of, it, it's a haunted house now, but I remember standing in front, it was called Starlight Club. And I remember standing in front of that and I, I had some money in my pocket. And I remember standing there and the devil said, why don't you just go in there and get drunk and throw in the towel? And I looked up in the sky, it was a very clear night. And I looked at the Lord and I said, you didn't do this to me, and I won't do that to you. I stand here today because at that pivotal moment, I didn't let the devil move me from my purpose. I believe that destinies are being weighed right now in the spirit. Hallelujah. Karabo shitela ba someday. So with your eyes closed for a moment and we just create an atmosphere. If you feel the enemy charging you, you need to make a declaration to God. Lord, before men, I am declaring that the enemy cannot move me out of position. For the, in the balcony or in the lower floor here, I want you to stand up and come to the front of this church. And I want you to tell the Lord, I will not move till you move me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel strongly that there are the future of many people is being weighed in the balance as destinies. God bless these people that they will finish their course. You need to finish your course. You can spread all the way out. Hallelujah. And the Holy Ghost is standing inside the gate of Hebron and he's saying, don't go out there. Don't go out there. You stay with me. Praise God. I'll be honest with you, I didn't expect this kind of response. But this shows you the potential that is in the atmosphere in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now I want you to slip your hands up. This is between you and the Lord. Renew your covenant with God. Ha <laughs> ya babor Sunday. That, Lord, you placed me here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't let misunderstanding, don't let offense, don't let lack, don't let pain make you move from where the enemy, <clears throat> from where God has placed you. Lord, I, I declare today that this is an army standing <clears throat> This is an army standing right now in this altar. And that, Lord, you're going to bless. God, the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord, God, be upon them today that the enemy cannot draw them out. Hold your position. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold your position. My prayer partners, if you want to come, you can intermingle amongst these and the rest of our church. You can come and stand behind them. And I want us to pray over this church that God will keep us positioned and that the enemy cannot draw us out of where God has planted us. I pray spiritual stamina on you. Oh my, I know what it feels like to think for years God has forgotten you. 
I pray the spirit of encouragement today on this building. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Prayer partners, you just make yourself at home. You can move in among them. You lay hands on them as God leads you. Lord, I pray today that when they leave, you will blow on the coals of fire of their spirit. And God, that there will be a flame begin to come up in the name of Jesus. Now, listen, we're a Pentecostal church. You need to lift up your voice. And you start praying in your prayer language. You need to begin to declare the Holy Ghost. Let there be a sound of victory all over this building. Come on, let's stand all over this building. This is altar service now. All over this building, begin to release your spirit. Begin to pray over the body of Christ all over the world. God, we just declare that, Lord, your children, your people will stay in a divine position where, Lord, the enemy cannot touch them. That the safety of God, the hand of God, the hand of God be upon them in the name of the Lord. Now, God, I thank you for your word.